Donovan, congratulations, brother. You recently Thank landed you. the tech role after less than four months in the accelerator. I got laid off in September 2024. If you are starting right now, what is the fastest way that you would find a job again? Donovan, congratulations, brother. You recently Thank landed the tech role after less than four months in the accelerator. Can you tell me what was your state before you joined the accelerator? How yeah. was your search like? Yeah, it's um, it, it was uh, so I, I got laid off in September 2024, uh, going coming from Mexico. So that week when I was still on vacation, I got this mysterious email, and I was really, really curious about. It. I'm like, oh, what is this is about? Because it just said. Wait, so you got the email while you were on vacation. Yeah. Mexico. So that week I came back from Mexico from, yeah. so from Mexico to Detroit, um, uh, okay. I was still on vacation. I took another week just to kind of like rest and recover. It, um, yeah. so it was like a three week vacation, but the last week was like kind of rest and recover. And then that following Monday I would go to work, but that, uh, that Tuesday. So I came back to Detroit Monday. Tuesday, I got the uh, letter or the email from my job. And then Wednesday was the day of that, you know, the announcement that they were going to let me go. So that was the meeting where, you know, you have the HR, the, the, the CEO and, you know, the leadership team letting you know, like, hey, we're mm. letting you go. Um, there's and not only that, but it was only t it was 10 people who also got let go. So it wasn't only me. I wasn't the only one that was singled out. It was just, you know, mm. the, the, the wave of like layoffs that were happening uh, around that year so uh, i was one of the unfortunate ones and then uh but yeah so that was that and then i had this it was kind of like actually it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise and the reason why i say that is because i was going towards looking into ai like i've been studying ai on my downtime since about january last year january 2024 um, but I didn't have like much of a guide. So I was doing much more self study. And so when they let me go and I'm like, okay, I'm going to get into AI. I'm just going to go hard on this AI thing because I know it's going to be really, really important. And a lot of companies are going to be drilling at it and want candidates with those skills. And so I made my a mission to join and so, or do AI and accept it. So I got severance, I got unemployment. Um, and so there was this program, I'm not going to say the name because I don't, want to you know hinder your your program but i'm not going to say the name of the program but you know the name of the program so it was this program i was originally interested in that taught ai skills and so for some reason this pro uh well this program i never got any response back they were supposed to take cohorts uh in september so i'm like okay this is perfect and so end of september i'm emailing them and they're like yeah we're trying to get things up maybe in october october i emailed them back like hey what's the status on this program and so nothing crickets and i'm like okay i gotta find something else like i gotta get into like some type of group and so there's the accelerator the uh co-benders and so join this and so that was kind of yeah. like my for oh go ahead at that moment what was your job search like because you joined oh. the accelerator a few months after being laid off right? yeah if i remember yep. correctly yep yep how's your situation were you more on like learning stages or just learning about ai or yeah. were you applying for jobs already or is your yeah situation like? so funny thing i realized that at least in my mind i thought that because it was like going into the holiday season no one was going to be really hiring and so I took it upon myself to like use that downtime to really focus on those skills and then build in public. And then January next year, when things are starting to open up with taxes and all that, I'll start applying. So that was like my notion. I didn't start mm -hmm. applying immediately after because I th thought in my mind, or at least where the seasons were, it would be a waste of time. So why not use that time to focus on those skills, build it up, and then start applying once I have those skills. and building public and you know going through the motions can you tell more about the job offer that you receive what is the job about yeah i mean you know the typical benefits 90k so it's basically for uh love six as a community tech worker so this is more so for helping medium to small businesses with their websites and then also is with ai automations as well so i've been doing a little bit of ai automations which is interesting that's something i want to do professionally as well so like you know email templates and you know uh, email, uh automatic e email responses um you know scheduling uh phone or was it automated calls so those type of things with automation through like different tools and different like automation workflows like in and aid and make so oh, nice nice use any date and make for this mm -hmm. is there some custom development as well 
October. Yeah, there's some templates that that are out there that we can utilize. So it's kind of like free form, like whatever can get the client to A to B the fastest we can use. So yeah, nice, nice. So it's basically like an AI agency. They work with a bunch of clients to help them implement like AI solutions. Uh -huh. Essentially, got it, got it, got it. That's pretty cool. How did you get the interview for that position? Yeah, so. Funny story, I, it was actually through networking. So there's a lot of networking events happening here in the Detroit, uh, Michigan area. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to, you know, these events, but they, it seemed like they just sort of popped up more frequently as of like the last few weeks to a month where just things were just popular, like happy hours, dev network, AI meetups, and just all of these things just kind of explode out of nowhere. Cause so I was going to these and. I ran into a colleague that we go to the same networking events and he, 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 uh, he was like, Hey Donovan, uh, you know, or he approached me and we got in a conversation. He said, Hey Donovan, I noticed that you've been building a lot in public. Those AI apps you're doing is so cool. And you know, are you on the market? And I told him, yeah, I'm actually on the market. If you know any opportunities, let me know. And he had said that, yeah, I'll let you know. I think I know a few opportunities as well. So um, about a week later, he sent me a message on LinkedIn of two positions, actually. The other position passed on me. And then this position with Live6, uh, I got the email or, uh, you know, uh, they got I got the interview and, you know, was able to get hired. So it was basically you started building projects in public, like AI mm -hmm. projects in public on mm -hmm. LinkedIn, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. I remember the projects you were posting. Um, can you actually mention a few of the projects? I think people would be interested to know a few of the projects that you're building. Yeah, yeah. So I built, oh, gosh, I mean, built about four, five or four projects at least. I want to say more. But anyway, I built a interview uh, app that really blew up. Like everybody was talking about that for a minute. Uh and that was like a vocal app using, uh, it was using Vappy, the Vappy voice API. So I was like big on to, I remember in the, the accelerator, you mentioned voice API, voice AI. So I was looking at different AI endpoints such as Vappy, Eleven Labs, and then Open AI had one and then speech yeah, to text. The real time so, API from Open yeah, AI. Yeah, yeah, real time API. And so I decided to, basically build like vocal based apps using a vocal AI and those endpoints. And so I built a interview app, I build a app where you can talk to a website, but all of these are vocal. We can talk mm. to a website vocally, yeah. ask questions, PDF, you can talk to vocally. Um, the cool thing that I liked is you, you took the projects <laughs> of the accelerator and you added your own little twist to them, right? Yeah. You made them specific to what you're doing. You're interested in voice AI. You saw that there was a big potential. This I kept saying the accelerator, like voice AI guys, like you have to, to target this. There's a lot of potential. And you added that spin to to the different projects in the accelerator. And then you started posting them on LinkedIn, right? Like videos and screenshots of those projects. Yep. And people started commenting like this. Yep. 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 I got a lot of engagement. And I, and that's what tipped off my uh my cogly when he noticed that, like, hey, yeah, you've been building with AI. That's super cool. And other people have said that too, but he he was the one that really took notice and decided to look out for me. So I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that's the thing. So the thing I, I keep telling people is if you spend a lot of time building a project and you just put it on GitHub where no one is ever gonna see it, it's such a shame, right? It's it's kinda like it's a very bad return on your time invested. Invest so much time in the project and no one will see it. So you might as well just post it, get people to see it. And you might have maybe one person out of a bunch of people going to see it. This one person is going to help you get to the next opportunity. And it's all that matters, right? You ultimately just need one person who gives you the right referral to get you the job that you want. And then you're set, essentially. So in your case, you said one person saw, like one of your former colleagues saw mm -hmm. one of the posts that you're making. Yep. They noticed that, okay, you have those nice AI skills now. And then that person introduced you to the, the company where you work now. Yes, correct. How is the interview he had, process he, like? he had connections to that company, so. Ah, okay, got it. Yep. How was the interview process like? What did they ask you? Like, how many rounds? How was the, the process? It was like two rounds, actually. So one was like to get to know you. And then the second one was more a technical one where they just asked me about my background, you know, the tech. Uh, stacks that I use, the different AIs that I'm familiar with, the different type of like AI 
uh, you know, um, types like, you know, OpenAI, Claude, ChatGPT, DeepSeek. So those things basically. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff that I worked on as well with like building in public. So they looked at my LinkedIn. They thought that was really cool. So So one thing that is interesting is, so basically you didn't have like a very technical interview, right? It was more behavioral and then it was just some technical general question, like a technical Mm -hmm. screen essentially. Yes. So the interesting part is when you start building in public, especially if you go after those smaller type companies or the startups or agencies or companies like this ultimately if you really build in public a lot and you make because you were making your code accessible as well right I right yeah i had a public. link to the live uh code and then a link yeah. to the github so basically it's open source that's what yes. you have done you have open source yep. your project people can see the code yep. and when you get a lot of engagement you get users so the app is deployed and the code is live that's what we push in the accelerator so we push you to do is People see your skills ultimately. They don't really need to test it as much because they see that the project is live, it's working, there are people trying it. They see the code, so they can literally check out the code that you have written. And then the conversation inter- interview becomes more a conversation to see if there is a good fit. Right? Uh-huh. They don't need to evaluate you as much, especially you came from a referral. So you had multiple things going on for you, right? You had the referral, you had the projects, all the code was live, it was deployed. Yeah. So they're like, okay, this guy, we, we have more trust in him. It's yeah. not just like this random candidate who just applies to a job board. You have no idea if it's a real person or, or if he's lying on his resume or, or whatever. Here you have a lot more trust built in. And then when you make the interview, it's more around figuring out, okay, is there a right fit with this person? Can we work with him? So that makes things a lot easier. Yeah, it was it, it was definitely that referral that helped me. And just getting in, I, I tell just people, just go out there and network. Preferably, I like networking in person, but online can work as well. But I, I find myself doing better in like in-person networks, like knowing my personality, being approachable and being able to communicate and you know articulate and just making those like LinkedIn connections so people can see your posts and be able to have which type of events do you recommend people to go to like to network there's uh meetups there's conferences there's like a little like study groups i i know there was a javascript study group here in detroit that kind of fizzled out and then there's a react study group here that do happy hour that was the one that started like make a lot of these events. We have a DevOps group I just went to yesterday. They had a happy hour. So I would say if you can go to those type of groups, um, and if you can't find a group, like say if you live in like the middle of a desert or a forest or just the middle of nowhere, try to do online groups as well. Like the Accelerator is a great, community obviously but there's so many like groups out there that you can do online so there's really no excuse for you not to network like there there's opportunities out there you just have to really put yourself out there and how did the resources in the accelerator help you land that job i was always interested in building ai and i just didn't know how to start really i've seen tutorials online but they don't really explain as much as what's going on and so with the accelerator was able to like break down things and, and be able to not only give you like, yeah, you'll get the project, right? But you'll also have the opportunity to build it on your own. So what I liked was I was able to take this project and just make my own and look at it and be like, okay, what can I do to make this my own? I can change the interface. I can change the features. I can add new features to this. I can really make this like this hodgepodge of like different features and different like things that would help allocate the user to be able to have like a really good experience. And so I just took full advantage of that. So just having that code base and be able to like step back and be and, and think and mm-hmm. say like, okay, what there's opportunities here to make this really, really awesome and make this a really good product. Yeah. yeah. And the, the weekly calls as well, the community, yep. community. Did that help you too? Yes, absolutely. So the weekly calls were great. Um, just very engaging and then the community as well. Definitely, I would encourage you all, whoever's listening, to definitely engage with the community, be shown, be seen, even try to help out even. There's, there was times where I did help out, even though sometimes I didn't know the answer, I had to go and research it. Or I did know the answer from just proven experience. And you just have this brothership community there that's really welcoming and engaging. So definitely take advantage of that community. Yeah. It's awesome. That's how you landed the paid project as well, right? Because I yeah. noticed you in the community, you're sharing a lot of projects because I'm always on the lookout for good developers and a hire for my AI agency as well. Like I see, okay, if there's someone who's good, someone I see has potential, I'm like, let's bring you on board on, on one of my paid projects. So we brought you on board for that automation project for that law firm that we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. So that's the thing. Ultimately, it's always the main rule is whenever you make your skills public, so whether what you did on LinkedIn by making your skills public inside of our community, by sharing your projects, people notice you. And if there is an opportunity, maybe it's not going to be in day one, 
but maybe after a few weeks, a month, a few months, then as soon as an opportunity, something happens, I'm like, in my head, I know, okay, Donovan, he has good skills. He has already built some pretty cool projects. I think it would be a good fit for it. Same thing, your your former colleague was like, oh, Donovan, it's cool that he's working on this project. Let me connect him with this company. That's in this market today, traditional ways of just applying to job boards, they don't work. But unconventional ways through networking, building in public, showcasing your skills, having connections or building those connections, leveraging on your network, targeting the right type of people, that's when you can get ahead and get opportunities. Is there any advices that you have for people who are in your situation a few months ago where you were looking for a job? What would you tell them? I would say, honestly, networking, networking, network. I cannot stress how important it is to find a network, to find a community, to find some things because you can't do this alone. This is virtually impossible to to build on its own. Like, you know, when I first started out coding, I, I built I, I we didn't have communities like this. So I'm so thankful and so appreciative that there's communities out there, both in person and online that I can turn to to ask questions, especially if you're a beginner. It's, it's tough out there to do this on your own. So definitely get a community, get a mentor, get whatever you can. And make sure it's a, a good person that knows what they're talking about. They just don't get anybody that's going to steer you down because there are people out there who can make can steer you down the wrong direction. So just be, you know, um, be vigilant about that. And then I will also say, uh, be conscious of the company you keep. You know, birds of a feather flock together. If you're around toxic, negative people, then guess what? You're going to be toxic and negative. Um, there's people I had to like not kick out of my life completely, but take, you know, spend less time with them to focus on what I want it is that I want to achieve. So uh, I think that's very important as well. Yeah, good point. That's a very good point. And if you're starting right now, imagine you're looking for a job right now. What is the fastest way that you would find a job again? What would you do? <clears throat> a couple of things, right? So I would definitely, again, I am sound like a broker worker, but networking, go to, go to, go to networking events, go to meetups, go to, and if you live in the middle of a desert, Get online, go to Slack, Slack, Discord, all those all those different uh, online communities and talk, make connections, help people, because in turn, they may remember you like, oh, that guy maybe gave me this recommendation. And, you know, X, Y, Z, prime example, Por Porva, I helped her on a couple of things and she took notice of me and we did like a couple of like group projects together. So she thought I was really cool. And so that's building connections. That's building trust. Yeah. Right. So that's, definitely, for context, that's another student in the, or another member of the accelerator. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. She's awesome. So her and James, we got together and we built like a, a small app together um, in the accelerator program. Um, so aside of like networking as well, um, definitely get your, get on LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn, Build your profile to the best of your ability. Make sure it's concise, it's clear. There's not a lot of fluff. There's not a lot of weird stuff. If there is, clean it up. Um, post on there three to four times a week. Uh, I do that as well. I actually do LinkedIn Live sometimes and I record myself. If you're comfortable with doing that, do it. But if you're not, just do the casual post of what you learn, what you build in, screenshots. You don't have to record yourself if you're not comfortable with it. I understand it. But if you do have that capacity and you think you can do it and build yourself up to it, I will highly recommend it because that'll make you stand out because people see your face, they see your voice, yeah. they know who you are. And, and it can be just a simple Loom video, right? It doesn't have yes. to be anything complex. You don't have to edit it. Just right. install Loom, record a quick uh, one minute, two minute video showcasing your project. And that's it. And just post it. Thank you, brother. Donovan. Yeah. Again, congratulations on your offer. Very Thank happy you. for you. And wish you all the best. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.